Over 1,000 years ago, there was a young Indian brave by the name of Cocapelli. And Cocapelli was one of those cool Indians, and he was hanging out. And that very day, his best friend came running up to him, excited and out of breath. He was running up like, Cocapelli, Co oh, Cocapelli, did you hear about the elk? Cocapelli's like, no, what elk? Oh, my grandpa, he just got done telling me about this one elk that lives so deep in the forest that nobody's ever seen the elk before. <laughs> So what? said Cocapelli. There's a lot of elk that live in the forest. Who cares? No, no, Cocapelli, you don't understand. My grandpa says the first person that sees this elk, they're going to get the gift of magic. Are you serious? said Cocapelli. His friend said, that's when Cocapelli got the idea. That very night, Cocapelli went to bed very early because the very next morning he woke up early. So early, in fact, that nobody in his teepee was awake yet, so he very quietly put on his moccasins. And once he tiptoed over his mom and his brother and his sister, he snuck out of the teepee and started running through the camp. And once he was out of the camp, he ran over the hill and around the next hill. And once he finally got to where he was going to be, he found himself standing in front of the forest. He looked back at the camp. But Cocapelli decided to enter into the forest. He walked deeper and deeper into the forest. He was looking for that elk. He walked deeper and deeper into the forest looking for any signs of the elk. But he saw nothing. So he walked deeper and deeper. The sun had crossed the sky and before Cocapelli knew it, he stopped because he realized it's gonna be dark soon. I better go back. There's no elk in this forest. Besides, I don't want to be alone out here when it's dark. That would be scary. I'm going to go home. Hey, wait a minute. I thought I, but I, I came in into my, but I'm going to take him. I'm going to, I, oh no. Cogapelli sat down on a log to think about what he was going to do. And when he was sitting there, you guys, that's when he heard the sound. <laughs> the sound was coming from over there from behind the trees. Cocapelli was looking to see what it was, but he couldn't see anything because the trees were too thick. But there was definitely something over there because he could hear the footsteps pounding on the ground. He could hear branches breaking off the trees. Whatever it was, it was coming in Cocapelli's direction. And Cocapelli was thinking, I better hide. <laughs> Cocapelli ducked behind a tree. He looked from behind the tree and over from where the sound was coming, he could see these huge pair of antlers. Then the head of the mightiest elk Cocapelli has ever seen. Cocapelli saw how big it was and he said, oh my God. The elk started looking through the forest. Suddenly he spotted Cocapelli and he began to walk right for him. Cocapelli ducked down thinking, he sees me! I gotta get out of here. The footsteps grew louder and louder. Cocapelli is like, I gotta get out of here. Cocapelli was about to take off and run for his life. And that's when he, he froze. He didn't move a muscle because the footsteps had stopped, but now he hears breathing right above his head. But the breathing stopped, and Cocapelli heard a deep voice say, You stand up. Uh, now. <laughs> there was that elk staring Cocapelli right in the face. He looks down into Cocapelli's eyes and he says, Who are you? Mama! Mama! 
Oh no, oh no, oh no, my, 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 my name is Coco Pelli. You, you say you're Coco Pelli. <laughs> I don't believe you. You cannot be Coca Pelli because I was told Coca Pelli is an Indian that is 10 feet tall and would come into my forest to challenge me for my gift of magic. You, you too small to be Coca Pelli. You can never handle my challenge. You better go home, little Indian, to your mommy. <laughs> The elk started to walk away, and Coca Pelli was left standing there. He didn't know what to do. The elk was walking away. He had to do something, so he built up his courage and he yelled at that elk Hey, elk! The elk stops. Coca Pelli said, Uh, your challenge? Um, what is that anyway? Oh, you're interested in my challenge. Oh, it's real easy, little Indian. All you have to do is jump on my back. If you can jump on my back, you win the challenge. Would you like to try the challenge, little Indian? I, I, well, I... Good. Well, then let the challenge begin. Well, the elk backs up, and he lowers those antlers and points them right at Cocapelli. And Cocapelli was looking at that elk thinking, oh boy, I have to jump on his back and get the gift of magic. <sighs> okay, I could do this. Okay, I'm going to take a running start and then I'm just going to jump on his back. <laughs> okay, okay, concentrate, concentrate. One, two, three. He starts running towards the elk. And you could imagine how scared Coco Pelli was when he was running towards that elk. He started running closer and closer towards the elk. And as he got close enough to the elk, he jumped up into the air. <sighs> Coco Pelli was flying through the air towards the elk. And the elk had his antlers like this. And here comes Coco Pelli. <sighs> But at the last second, the elk turns his head and he buries his shoulders into Coca Pelli. Coca Pelli runs right against a tree. The elk on the other end is laughing his head off. <laughs> you have failed, little Indian. I knew you were not the great Coca Pelli. Stop wasting my time. Coca Pelli was getting up off the ground. Oh, you do. I got I a lot of trees. I got a dumb tree. Hey, hey, wait a minute. I want one more chance. Don't leave. Oh, really? You want some more? Well, this time I'm not going to be so nice, little Indian. <laughs> oh boy. Okay. I gotta do something different. I don't wanna land up against that tree again. Wait. Hey, wait a minute. Coca Belly got an idea. That's it. That could work. Coca Belly counts off again. One, two, three. He takes off running. This time, as Coco Pelli started running towards the elk, he knew he had to run faster than he had ever run in his whole life. So he started running so fast, all he could hear in his head was his heartbeat. This time, instead of jumping up into the air, Coco Pelli slides down to the ground, slides right in front of the elk because the elk had his feet like this, and Coco Pelli slides right between his legs, right behind the elk. The elk churned with his antlers, and as Coco Pelli was standing up like this, the elk grabbed a hold of him, picked him up in his antlers, started swinging Coca Pelli about and Coca Pelli knew he was in trouble he was trying to stay calm though ah! the elk swishes Coca Pelli into the air <sighs> up 
goes Coca Pelly and lands right into the top of that tree. Ah! He starts falling down that tree, hitting every branch. He catches the very last branch in the tree and he's holding on with his life and he looks down and what do you think he sees? So what do you think he does? Uh, uh. This cannot be. The elk's muscles flinch, and the elk starts to churn and starts to run. And Coco Pelli, almost falling off the elk's back, grabs a hold and holds on for his life because the elk starts to run faster and faster. So fast with those big legs. Coco Pelli was holding on to the elk. Ah! The elk ran through the trees and started to head up towards the top of the mountain. And once the elk's feet reached the top of the mountain, they were moving so fast that the elk's feet jumped into the air and went higher and higher into the sky. That elk was running with Coca Pelli on his back. The elk ran all the way to the, where the clouds were. And when the elk finally reached those white clouds, he started to slow down and finally stopped. The elk turned and said, you can get down now, Coca Pelli. Huh? Huh? Uh-uh. Get down. OK, OK. Coca Pelli jumps off the elk's back. Ah, oh, whoa, huh? He lands on the white fluffy clouds. Whoa. That's when the elk turned and said, your gift of magic is here in the clouds. If you want the gift, it is yours to take Coca Pelli. Coca Pelli put his hands into the clouds. He started feeling around. And as he was feeling in the clouds, that's where he felt the magical gift. Wow. He pulled out a beautiful flute. He goes to put that flute to his lips, and the elk said, Wait a minute. You must know that this is a very special flute. It has a powerful magic, which is called elk medicine. Do you know what elk medicine is, Coca Pelli? Elk medicine is what every person needs inside them so they can love music. Without the elk medicine inside, people cannot love music. So you must go with the magical flute and give the elk medicine to every single person so they all can love music. Coca Pelli nodded his head and he put the flute back up to his lips and he began to play the flute. Six days had passed, and on the seventh day, Coca Pelli slowly started to float down from the clouds, playing his beautiful flute. And as his foot finally came and touched the ground, that's when Coca Pelli began to dance. He began dancing as he played his flute, dancing and traveling all the way to where the next tribe of Indians were. And those Indians saw him coming, and they picked up their weapons and pointed them right at Coca Pelli. <laughs> when they heard the sound of that magical flute. They received elk medicine and they put down their weapons because they were now able to love the music. And Coca Pelli went on dancing, playing his flute, giving the elk medicine to every single person who heard the magical flute of Coca Pelli. And that's the story of Coca Pelli.